All right, so I gotta confess with you guys. So uh, I haven't backed up my virtual infrastructure for almost two years. Oh my God. So all those changes that I've been doing with SCCM and my database and my Active Directory, all those GPOs, no backup. So today I am going to take the TerraMaster F2423 NAS server. I did a video with you guys. I set this guy up with a hypervisor, but the two hard drives right here are 250 gigs. That's not enough for my backups. So I have two four terabyte hard drives and we're going to set it up. I'm using Veeam for my backup to do all my virtual machines and stuff like that. Uh, like back then I used to use this, wait. Yeah, so back then I used to use this little guy and this was about, oof, I would say 500 gigs of storage space and it wasn't enough. I was really lazy and cheap not to get something bigger. Uh, so I decided to actually purchase two hard drives. I got them at a good price. I'm gonna replace the two hard drives inside this TerraMaster NAS server use this guy as my primary repository backup storage device to back up my virtual machines because it's been two years. So let's get right into that. Let's hook it up, configure it and start backing up. All right, so it's time to replace the two hard drives that I have on the F2423 from TerraMaster, replacing it with the Seagate four terabyte hard drives. I got them on a good price, so I'm gonna put these guys right here and I'm gonna remove these guys because these guys, you know, remove, oh, there you go. Removing it is like a pain in the butt. Awesome. Then let's do the same thing for this guy. All right. So, just gonna remove it. I actually got them locked down with some screws. Unscrew these guys from the cradle, replace it with the four terabyte ones, slap them back in, hook up the TerraMaster into my network and uh, log into the portal, configure the two hard drives and then start backing everything up. All right, so we got the power cable. I got my ethernet for the TerraMaster F2423. We just inserted the two four terabyte hard drives from Seagate. Again, I got them super cheap. Originally I had two 250 gig SATA hard drives uh, and I'm gonna be using this guy for my virtual machine backup and those 250 gig hard drives will not do. So that's the reason why I'm upgrading them to four terabytes. So let's hook up the power cable, hook up the ethernet. On the other end, I'm gonna hook it up to my Cisco switch and then power this guy on. Again, uh, I already used this on one of my videos, setting it up with a hypervisor. So it already has an IP address and once it boots up, I'm gonna log into the portal and set up the two hard drives. So I just plugged in the ethernet cable on my Cisco switch. And if we trace the cable all the way to the bottom, it is hooked up to the TerraMaster F2423 NAS server, which we are going to use to back up my virtual machines. All right, so uh, I'm gonna let that boot up for a bit. All right, so we're at my computer. Uh, first thing that I did was uh, I ran an advanced IP scanner on my network because I felt like I assigned an IP address to the TerraMaster F2423 and it looks like I did it. So the IP address that I was assigned to it automatically was uh, 192.168.1.16. So open up my favorite browser, enter the IP address, hit enter, and I got this. 
So I clicked on start. I clicked on automatic. I got a warning about the data on the hard drives will be deleted. Yes. Confirm it. You're going to see your two hard drives. It's going to do like a checkup. Eventually, once this is done, you're going to get this. Now, I provided a username, password. I confirmed it. I even changed the name of the TerraMaster NAS server. Uh, I gave it my time zone and an email address. Now, for the email address, it's because you want to send a code to verify that you are who you are. If you don't want to do that, you can actually say, can't receive email, skip this. So just skip it for now. And it's gonna give you a warning, just confirm the warning, and it's gonna start doing its thing. Once it's done, you're going to get this. So I advise you to click on save, to save a snapshot of this information, and then just click on next. Once you click on next, it wants you to log into the portal. So just enter the username and password that you provided, and it's gonna take you in here. Now, the first thing that I did was I clicked on control panel, and within control panel, I went into volume. Now within volume, as you can see, it says synchronizing 1.6%. Now this literally took about 14 to 15 hours to complete for me. And I think the reason why is because they are four terabyte hard drive. So it's a lot, it's a lot of information that it was trying to synchronize, but you're still able to use the machine. So within here, I clicked on home. Within home, I clicked on file service. And within file service, I extended the SMB SIF file service and I basically enabled it because that's what I want. I want to enable the SMB services and create a share folder to point to V to back up my virtual machines inside that folder. So I clicked on advanced and the first thing that I did was I changed the max version of the SMB. It's a no-no. SMB version one is a big no-no. So I clicked on the drop down menu and I did version three. And for the minimum, I did uh, SMB2 with a large MTU. Uh, I clicked on apply. Configuration was saved, which was a good thing. And I went to my file explorer. I basically did a backslash backslash in the IP address of my NAS server and I hit enter. It's going to prompt you for credentials. Now, the credentials that I use here was the username and password that I used to log into the portal. You are able to go inside the NAS server and configure a username for these mounts. But for this video, I just used that particular username and password that I logged into the portal. So I enter that information and I click OK. And you're going to automatically see three shares. So you're probably saying to yourself, where are these three shares coming from? You go back inside your TerraMaster and you click on File Manager, you're going to see that's where those file shares are at. Okay. So I went inside Control Panel. Within Control Panel, I clicked on Share Folder. Within Share Folder, I expanded Share Folder, and I clicked on Create. And I'm going to give my folder a new name, and I gave it BTNHD VM Backup, because that's what I need that folder for. I left everything as is and I clicked on next. You are able to encrypt the share folder, but that's up to you. I did leave enable recycling bin with a retention of 20 days. You are able to configure that, but 20 days is pretty, pretty cool. And that's the default setting. So click on next there. For the set permissions for this folder, I made it full access and I clicked on next. And I didn't do a quota for this folder, so I clicked next here. A nice little summary and just click on create and your folder is done. Now, if you go back inside your Windows File Explorer and you right click inside of it and you click on refresh, you're going to see your new folder. Awesome. So on the desktop, well, on my desktop, I located V and I double clicked on the icon. This launched up. I clicked on connect. It connected me to my V console. And from here, I went inside the backup infrastructure and then I clicked on backup repositories. So at the top of the toolbar, I clicked on add repository and I got this nice little window. I clicked on network attached storage. Uh, you get two options. Now for us, I'm definitely going to do an SMB share. Click on that. You're going to get a new backup repository wizard. So give it a name, give it a description, click on next. Now for the share folder path, I just copied and pasted the USC path of my new folder which would be the IP address, backslash, and whatever name you provided. 
Now I did check off this share requires access credentials and I clicked on add and I provided my username and password for that share to establish that connection. So I clicked OK, click next here. It's going to start connecting to the server. If everything is successful, it's going to move to the next window and that would be how big the repository is. That's, that's a good thing. So I clicked on next here. Next here, apply. It's going to apply all the settings. You get all green check marks, which is a good thing. And then click next here. Nice little summary, and you click on finish. So our new repository is within our backup repository within D. Now it's time for us to create a new, you know, backup job. So from here, I went inside home. Within home on the toolbar, I clicked on backup job and I clicked on virtual machine because that is what we are going to be backing up. So on the new backup job wizard, I gave it a name. You are able to give it a description. It's up to you. Click on next. And within the virtual machines, click on add. And once you click on add, you get the add objects and just expand your hypervisors. Once you expand your hypervisor, you should see all the virtual machines that you have within your infrastructure. And basically just select one and click on add. Continue doing that until you have all the virtual machines that you want Dean to back up. Now, these are the six that I have within my environment that I want backed up. So once you're done, just click on next. And for the storage, uh, it's automatically pointing to the old solid state drive. We don't want that. So I'm going to click on the drop down menu and pick the new repository, which would be the Terra Master that we kind of configured together. And from there, we're going to click on next. Uh, for the guest processing, I clicked on next there. For scheduling, I'm not going to schedule it as of now because I'm not going to have this machine up and running 24-7. So once I have my lab up and running, I might have to do it manually. I, I don't have a problem with that. So apply it. You get a nice little summary. But before I click on finish, I'm going to check off run the job when I click on finish because I definitely need a backup on my virtual machines. I haven't done it for two years. Holy crap, two years. Two years. Ah. So click on finish. And once you click on finish, the backup job is going to, uh, you know, show up in your queue. And eventually on the status column, it's going to start saying starting. And if you highlight your new backup job, you see the action just filling up. And on the left hand side, you'll see all your virtual machines. And it's going to start backing up, which is a good thing. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video about setting up TerraMaster. F2423. Again, I did a video setting this um, NAS server with the hypergeyser with you guys, but I actually had 250 gigs hard drives on it. I upgraded to two 4 terabyte hard drives and I reconfigured it. I added it to my Veeam repository to start backing up my virtual machines because I haven't done it for so long. Holy crap, so long. But that's it. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys on the next one.